Hello and welcome to Sonic Lab. I'm Gaz Williams and today we're looking at the Roland VR1 HD. This is an AV streaming mixer. And typically, we wouldn't really look at something like this on Sonic State, but with the lockdown, uh, the need for improved streaming has become so vital that a device like this really is of much more interest than perhaps it would have been a few months ago. Now, what it is essentially is a combination, you can kind of think of it almost like a combination of an audio interface, albeit a fairly sim simple audio interface, and a video mixer. In the case of the VR1 HD, we have got three HDMI inputs uh, and it, audio inputs. We've got two XLRs, one at the side, one at the top here, and a stereo input on uh, phonos and stereo outs as well. Uh, it connects to the computer via USB 3, and you have to make sure that that cable isn't too long, as I discovered it won't work. Uh, so it really needs a cable. I mean, at the moment, I think I've got one that's about 1.8 meters, and that seems to be fine. Over USB, it appears on your computer like a webcam. So it's completely compatible with pretty much anything. If, it, if, if, you, if your software can see a webcam, it can see the VR1 HD. So that means Skype and Zoom and any other kind of Google Hangout type thing is, it's going to work with. So with the range of features that Roland have put on the VR1 HD, they're hoping it's going to appeal to people who run their own show, much like I've started running my own show. And I've been using the Roland as part of the review, uh, trying it out in the big bad world. Now I've made many mistakes, but I'm getting better. And the Roland has actually been a very useful tool for someone like myself, who's a beginner basically to streaming. Now, the sort of things that you can do on this unit are, as I say, just basic kind of switching between your input sources. Uh, I've got three inputs uh, here. Uh, I should mention that the third input has a special feature. It has a through jack on the back for HDMI. The reason for this is it allows you to take your computer screen output, so the HDMI cable that would go into your monitor, you plug it into input three and then out of the through into your monitor. And the reason you can do that is you can record your desktop. And we can see here, here's my desktop as well. I'm using a, a scene, I'm using scene B here, which I've configured to be a picture in picture. So you can see me and the desktop. And also what we can see on the desktop is the uh, VA, VR1 HD RCS, which is a full remote control that works over the USB connection. This might be good is if you're working from the computer itself and you can, uh, you can get to all the features with the, with the mouse. Uh, so as I maybe switch to uh, a different view like this, uh, we can see that the the buttons flash and change on the desktop. Uh, so they're, they're both in sync. You have to make sure that the green connect light is on though for both software and hardware to talk to each other. Now, what we can also see from here is um, this menu down the left-hand side, which we can actually toggle with the menu button here. Uh, but these uh, these are like sub-menus now, and these sub-menus are where we can get at the at the the depth that's sort of lurking within the VR1 HD. So a, a good thing maybe to look at would be the audio mixer. So we can see I'm coming in there on input channel one, and we can see. Um, that we've got three outputs there. We've got our main output, we've got our auxiliary output, and we've got our USB stream. So the USB stream is the level that is coming down the USB 3 cable. Uh, so that so essentially we can think about that as our webcam level, the level that that the viewer is going to hear. We've also got headphone control on the unit itself and there's VU meters on here and the main channels all have a little signal peak light there so we can see if we're clipping or not, which is obviously very handy. If we were to go into the setup, each one of our channels has additional functions. So it will, let's have a look on channel one. I hit setup and it takes us into this sub menu where we can get to our EQ settings. Uh, I, I'm gonna turn off the EQ. So if you listen to my voice now, this has got the EQ on, EQ is off. EQ's on, so a little bit of a top end lift there. And it's also a high pass filter on there just to cut out any low rumble. Um, 
we're going to new tab, dynamics, and we've got a gate control and a compressor limiter. The compressor is on and you'll take the compressor off, put the compressor back on. It's the threshold set fairly high, so you're not going to hear a lot of compression, but we've got three different compressor modes available to us. Uh, and the gate is quite nice in that you've got an adjustable release as well. So when the gate closes, uh, or, you know, it will close slightly slower, so you won't get harsh chopping off there. A really nice feature is the fact that you can map MIDI controllers to control numerous features on the VR1HD. So for instance, if you wanted to control volumes or faders, then what we do is we go up to our MIDI controls. I'm going to go show MIDI control mapping and then actually I'll bring open the mixer for instance you know anything that's got this little blue box with a line in it means that it's assignable to MIDI so I'm going to just sort of select something learn MIDI control I'm going to reach over and adjust the, a MIDI controller here we are and I've mapped that fader to CC 14 so anyway, yeah, so our menus, they do go quite deep. Um, but the good news is, is that all of this extra control can be accessed from the hardware unit itself. Yes, so on the back of the unit, we can see we have a monitor output as well as a main HDMI output. So if you wanted to, you could run the output of this into an HDMI capture. Uh, and I think maybe the quality, visual quality, may be slightly better than over USB, but I don't think there's that much in it. Uh, what I have noticed is, though, is that the video quality, the raw video quality that I'm getting from the VR1 HD certainly seems a little bit better than the other video switcher that I'm using at the moment. And I'll show you a little demonstration of those two a little bit later. But I mentioned that uh, you can indeed uh, get at the settings from this little panel here. Now, it's a very simple control, but it's actually quite effective. Uh, so you do need to have another HDMI uh, out coming out from the monitor. So in, in front of me, I've got a little screen so I can see what uh, what's going on here. Now, let's just swap over so we can now see the menu screen. OK, we're looking at the image now going into a capture card. I'm doing that so we can see how this overlay works. OK, so I, when I press the menu button, it opens up this little over, you know, and you can see my hand behind there. This is like a kind of like an overlaying menu. Now, because this is on the monitor out, this isn't going to be seen by the audience. And I should mention that the VR1 HD does not have any preview mode whatsoever. So whatever's lit up, on the front panel is what is going to be going out of the stream. I mean, handily, that big red on air button is super useful. And if I press that, it will act both as a fade to black and an audio fade out. In fact, let's press it just to see what happens. Um, I'm going to do it from here. So when I go, when I hit on air, we'll see a little fade out. And uh, we're back again. Um, OK, but now anyway, so coming back to here so we can see our menu, though. Um, I turn the knob and it lets me speed through the first page is mostly to do with video in uh, video. Second page is mostly to do with audio. And, uh, you know, if I was to go into audio input, for instance, mic one, and I like a, it says at the top there, one of two pages. So in the second page here, I could go into, say, dynamics. And there's all the same settings, albeit sadly without uh, any graphics. Uh, but, you know, this is kind of useful, though, because it allows you to get to these settings very quickly. Now, on the hardware unit itself, we have got shortcuts, which is helpful. So there's a lot of menu diving going on there. But but if you hold the menu button down and press any of the buttons, then that's a shortcut. It will take you straight there, which is super useful. So let's say, for instance, I if I wanted to set up, um, say, the picture in picture, let's have a look. So our scenes, uh, scene one is set up like this. Scene two is the desktop with me. Scene three, there is a split screen of me and the device. Scene four ah, is another split, but in a different way, in a horizontal split. And then scene E, this is called picture by picture, where you get the entirety of both images. Now, one thing that's a bit disappointing, I have to say, though, is although you've got three inputs, you cannot make a collage of all three inputs. You can only ever 
be seeing two images at any point in time. So I would really have loved to have been able to have had the third image. So like we can see that one and this one and, and to be able to see the third one. Like, you know, I do a lot of bass, for instance. If I made a bass video, I could have one camera on my left hand, another camera on my right hand and then the other camera or oh, anyway. It's just the way it is. You can only see the two images. But the, the picture by picture is quite nice there. And what I really like, though, is that these are completely configurable from the hardware. Now, let's get our menu back open. And uh, I'm going to use the shortcut, actually. So I'll go, I'm going to go menu and D. Now, this has taken me straight, jumped me straight to the settings for this particular scene, um, D. Now, it hasn't changed the scene, though. It's still on scene A. So let's go to scene D. Uh, so scene D here. Now, what we could do, for instance, like I could go down to my... I could centre... See how I can... I, I'm moving the bottom one down a little bit. I can change that. Uh, the top one, you know, if I, like the top of my head being a bit cropped there, I could just pull it down uh, like so. Um, you know, I could choose where the set... where which screen has the majority of the split and stuff like that, you know. So super, super cool. Something I should also mention is that if you do a long press on the button, like let's say for instance here, the center, I do a long press and it jumps back to the default setting. In that case, it was only a very small amount, but sometimes it, it you know, it's really handy because it saves a lot of scrolling. Uh, another thing I, I will mention though, is when you do scroll the thing, it's doing it in small increments. If you press the encoder down and turn it, then it does it in big increments. So even though this setup is a very simple little thing, uh, then it's, it actually, you can navigate very very fast on it so i like that now i was just saying though the output of this is going through the atem mini pro which is certainly a competitor to the roland um there's pros and cons of both but one thing you might notice here i'm taking just a, a clean out to the uh black magic and if i do this you can see that the black magic image is quite a bit darker than the uh, the Roland image. Now both uh, are using their default sort of outputs, um, but it kind of shows to me that the Roland has a really nice default clear output. Now speaking of outputs, I'm going to go back to this version to the ATEM though, so that allows me to get the capture menu up. And if I was to go to video output, for instance, we can see what our video formats what's available to us. And the maximum output is this 1080 at 25 frames. That's the maximum output. So we can't do 4K. But it is worth knowing that the Roland VR1 HD, all three inputs are automatically scaling and they can, um, so you can put any resolution in and it'll upscale it to 1080. Or in the case of my camera, this one, that's actually uh, sending in a 4K image, and then it's sort of in that case, it's downscaling to 1080. Uh, and the nice thing is, is you don't really need to get your hands dirty with that. It does a lot of that for you automatically. However, should you wish and you want to dive in and, and start tweaking, then that that's also available. And I thought I'll demonstrate this uh, as well because it is really is a quite a neat feature. Um, I've got here an old iPhone 5S. Now, if I plug that in, I'm going to switch out my second camera for it. I'm going to switch to that view. Okay, <laughs> obviously a little bit of a, a, a worse quality camera. This is an iPhone 5S. Uh, also not a particularly great frame, but you can notice if I go between one and two here, we can see that, that the frame of the, for whatever reason, coming out of the camera, although it's meant, uh, coming out of the iPhone, although it's meant to be 1080, we can see that it's not f completely, the crop of it isn't filling the entire space. Now, if we get our menu up and then I'm gonna hold down menu and jump to here. If I was just to zoom a little bit, you know, I can then, 
I can remedy that there by just zooming in. But if we go to the second page here as well, then we have got like, you know, I could increase the brightness. Uh, actually, the brightness could do with being up a little bit. The contrast as well. Uh, let's see. Actually, a bit more contrast. Saturation. And actually, if I was jumping between my two images, then I could be trying to dial it in and getting it a little bit closer. We can see here color space is set to auto and the different color spaces available to us are the YCC HD, YCC standard, RGB 16, and RGB 0 to 255. What that means, I don't really know as of yet. <laughs> so I leave it on auto. These four buttons along here, they're called audio effects. And what they are, you can define to a small amount. Now, I find it a little bit frustrating, if I'm honest. I'd like this to be a little bit easier to use. But um, installed are a sound effect. So if I've just told a funny joke, for instance. Yes, thank you very much, thank you. So you can have a sound effect like that on. Also, you know, a jingle. It's a little piece of music that you could play in, like so. There's a voice changer. Which, now, it's on my voice. Uh... I guess if you're making some sort of radio show. Things like that may be of use. And a reverb, hence the reverb send. So, one of the very best features of the VR1 HD is the auto switching. Now, this is something that is really helpful for musicians as well, because if you're performing, uh, you can just press auto switch and then the, the device will just switch between our different like scenes or inputs and we'll have a look at how you can configure this so shortcut menu auto switch and we can see now that our types are auto scan beat sync and video follows audio so video follows audio um you can imagine if you were if you had a bunch of uh people and there was camera and there was mics on each camera then video follows audio it'll auto switch to whoever's speaking so that that could be quite handy um beat sync however that's something that's really aimed at musicians where you can choose well first of all where the sync source is coming from i've got it set to line input which is probably most used for musicians but it could be coming from the mics or it could be coming from the sound from the pc so usb from pc means any sound playing from your desktop uh or you could actually synchronize it to your built-in, to the sound that you've loaded into your audio effects. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to leave it online. And then cycle then is how many beats uh, from one to 10 uh, will happen before a switch takes place. So I guess four, four makes sense. Although I like fives. <laughs> Sequence then normal or random. So it'll just jump randomly. Um, or the other one, as we saw, was auto scan. Now, what's good with auto scan? If I turn it on here, you can see it's just jumping every second, I think, to the different images. Um, but if I scroll down here, we can set the duration. So we could say, actually, when it's on me, it's three seconds. I'll turn it off. I'll turn off those um, scenes uh, from here. So it'll now be three seconds on me, one second on that image, one second on the desktop, then back to me. So this device really does work very well for musicians for, for that reason. I think having the faders as well is kind of very musician friendly, you know, um, having the inputs and the microphone inputs and the settings to get the voice sounding nice built in is also very cool. Um, you know, as I mentioned, it's like a combination of an audio interface and a video switcher. Uh, the audio interface, though, is super simple. Uh, on your computer, it will just appear as a two in, two out. And essentially, because this is a mixer, and something very important to understand with these things is when you are recording from here, or streaming, but certainly recording, it doesn't record all of the inputs and everything. You know, it's essentially mixing down your visuals into a single visual and your audio in however many inputs you've got coming in into a stereo mix as well. So also you've got a key function where you can switch in the key and then 
you can use that in a couple of different ways. You could use that with a green screen behind you, but also you could use it if you wanted to have a text or a graphic overlay. So in case you're wondering, I'm using OBS on the computer to record into. So you can think of OBS almost in this case, like a tape recorder or a video recorder that over USB in OBS, it's set to record the sound and the visuals from the VR1 HD. Now, OBS, that's completely free software, uh, but you could use other things to record the stream. Uh, QuickTime, for instance, and I know on, on Windows there's plenty of options too. But if you're streaming, however, that's slightly different. Um, you can still use OBS to stream, and that's what I do. If the software recognises a webcam, it'll see the VR1 HD and you're good to go. An excellent feature the VR1 HD has that is of special note to musicians is the ability to delay the audio to synchronize the sound to picture and the reason for this is that uh, HDMI signals typically are a little bit late late now because the microphone is going straight into the VR1 HD uh, that that audio is reaching that faster than the images coming from the camera and I can demonstrate that now so let's open up our menu and we'll, yeah we'll go into audio output and I'm going to go into USB stream, okay? And this is nice because if I was monitoring with headphones on, uh, I could still hear it without putting a delay on, but this delay that I'm adding adds on to the stream. So everyone who's watching it in you know the audience will hopefully see it synchronized. We can see that we've got a, a nine frame uh, delay. Now, if I reset that, I'm going to do that by pressing on the button here. And now if I do like a clapperboard, we could probably see just how out of sync it's become. Um, <laughs> okay, it's back to nine frames now. Uh, and we should see the things are back in sync again. So that's really, really, really helpful having that ability to synchronize. As you notice, when I'm switching between images, we can see that there's a fade in the transitions. Now, we, if we go into our menu, we can go into transitions. And sadly, the only transitions that are available to us are mix fade, motion, or like a black fade, so fading out from black. But mix fade is kind of useful, but uh, you know, and that can be from like really, really quick to I think five seconds maximum for a smoother transition, like so. But I'll just show you what the, uh, what the motion does. There's no settings uh, to other than time, but let's just set that time to be like, say two seconds. And then we get a motion and it, it does this. And um, if I was to bring in picture and picture, we can see things kind of slide in. It's a shame though, that there are not more motions available or, you know, that there's just that single motion and, and that there's, that you can't decide which angle or, or which direction those things happen. So in terms of competition, the most obvious competition are the new ATEM Minis from Blackmagic, the ATEM Mini and the ATEM Mini Pro. I have got here the ATEM Mini Pro, and this is less than half the price of the Roland. It has an extra HDMI input. You can do a full preview mode, so you can have a multi-camera, uh, multi-view output that the Roland doesn't do. And also you can record onto hard drives, there's a record button, and also uh, an ethernet port, so you can stream directly from an ethernet connection without having to actually go through a computer. Uh, now, those are very strong features, and you may think, well, why on earth would anyone want the Roland? Well, having used them both now, I'm starting to realize that the Roland is a little bit more set up for, uh, for running a show. Uh, everything that you kind of need for the show is 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 directly on board. The Blackmagic is much more of a switcher-focused device, maybe not quite as uh, accommodating to uh, to somebody. Like when I do my show, for instance, uh, on a Wednesday night, uh, I can, you know, I have everything set up on the Roland, and it's kind of, the, the simplicity actually really helps. You know, you've got lots to think about in the heat of the moment there. Um so that's kind of good. But really, where the Roland really has big benefits over, say, the Black Magic, is in having the audio interface built in, uh, being able to set those 
audio offsets. You can't do that in the Blackmagic. Being able to process your signals like we saw with the iPhone 5S, I was able to resize it and colorize it. You can't do that either. Uh, with the Blackmagic, if you've got Blackmagic cameras connected, you, you can adjust the settings on board the cameras, but in terms of signal processing, it doesn't do that. Um, so those are pretty major features. The auto switching as well, as I mentioned, fantastic for musicians. Again, that's not in the Blackmagic either. And um, and the scene edit and being able to resize and to zoom images or to, to move them and shrink them and crop them and put them around. Again, these are features that the Roland has uh, over the black magic and these are pretty big for uh setting up your show so the build quality is beautiful typical roland quality here um you know it's built really well it feels good it inspires confidence and um yeah you know i think that the the the, the, the sort of high asking price around sort of 12 1300 uk pounds um is kind of justified somewhat by the quality of the image processing the build quality and the feature rain the feature set criticisms well as i mentioned i would love to be able to create scenes with the three images three hdmi inputs feels a little bit mean i would have loved it if it was four inputs like the atem however it is three inputs and that's what you get and you can still do plenty with three inputs for sure so you know you just have to gauge what's most important to you so there we go. That's the review of the Roland VR1 HD. Uh, I've been Gaz Williams. This is Sonic Lab. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Please stay tuned and subscribe if you haven't and catch you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>